How's it going ladies and gents, boys and girls? In this episode of Final Cut Friday, I'm going to show you how you can save your Final Cut Pro 10 libraries directly to a Synology NAS. So here's a question, before we even get started, why would you choose to edit videos off of a Synology NAS instead of editing off your internal drive on your Mac or an external SSD or something like that? Uh, well, I've really come to the conclusion that there are two strong reasons, one not a strong reason, a total of three different reasons why you want to do this. The biggest reason is that tons of people already have these things lying around the house because maybe they're running a Plex server or whatever the case may be, and they want to reuse it uh, for other things. They want to be able to use these NAS boxes for other things. So that's the strongest reason. You already own one. The second big reason is storage space. Now look at this right here. This is the Synology DS1618 Plus. Notice how many drive bays it has. This is one of the smaller NAS boxes. It has six drive bays. So think about this. If you had six 10 terabyte drives in this, that's 60 terabytes of storage space. Now obviously you have to configure DSM and whether or not you're using some sort of rate level, things of that nature. Obviously you're gonna have less working storage, but as you can see, that's still way more storage than you would have on your internal storage drive on your Mac. So that's the second big reason. The third one is the proliferation of 10 gigabit ethernet. And that's a little bit less so than the other two reasons because not everyone has 10 gigabit ethernet available. Not everyone owns an iMac Pro or the new Mac mini configuration with 10 gigabit ethernet. Not everyone owns a, um, a, uh, a Mac with Thunderbolt 3 because uh, there's little Thunderbolt 3 dongles that you can buy to get 10 gigabit ethernet. So that is a reason, but it's less of a reason for the majority of customers. But it still opens up the ability to edit higher quality videos, higher than 1080p comfortably. Okay, enough talk. Let's head over to the Mac and get started. So the very first thing you wanna do is just make sure you're running the latest version of DSM. So you can go to control panel, Go to update and restore and just make sure you are running the latest version. It should say your DSM version is up to date, which mine is. Now I have done a completely fresh and clean DSM install. So I need to go to storage manager and create a new volume here uh, because I don't have any. So just gonna click on create and select quick and keep everything set to default. I have four drives here, click okay, BTRFS. Click next and click apply and that will create my new volume. Now you may already have your volumes and shared folders set up and that's okay. I just wanted to start with a fresh and clean setup for the sake of this tutorial. All right, so you can see initializing that new volume and then it's just a matter of waiting for the initialization process to complete. And it looks like we're good now. So now we want to open up file station, click OK. And now we're going to create a new shared folder. So I'm just going to call it FCPX. And then click next, and then next and next all the way through and apply and then click OK. All right. So there is our FCPX shared folder. All right. So now if I go and select new in Final Cut Pro 10, select library. I select the FCPX shared folder and I try to save a new library there. Guess what Final Cut Pro 10 is going to tell us? You've probably seen this before. Unsupported volume type, choose a local SAN or supported SMB location. So in other words, yeah, you can't save a library there on that Synology NAS. At least not yet until you configure your NAS right now. Apple actually produced a support document about shared storage support with Final Cut Pro 10, and they really outline how to configure a Linux network attached storage system for Final Cut Pro 10, which the Synology NAS is. And they actually provide us with the configuration string necessary to enable library support on that NAS. So now it's just a matter of going in and adding that string to your SMB configuration. So to do so, we need to go into control panel, select advanced mode, go to terminal and SNMP, and then choose where it says enable SSH service. You can keep the port on 22 for now at least, and then click apply. All right, and then go up to file services. Make sure SMB is enabled. It should be by default. Click advanced settings, and then for maximum SMB protocol, choose SMB3 and click apply and click yes. All right, and then you can go in and disable the other protocols 
So that means disabling AFP and NFS if enabled and click apply. All right, so now it's just a matter of opening up the terminal, connecting to our NAS and editing the SMB configuration. But to do that, we need our IP address for our NAS. You can see mine there. So you wanna open your terminal window, type in SSH space, and then the IP address of your NAS. In my case, it's gonna be 169.254.125.1.1. Dot 55 then space and then dash p for port and then the port number 22 and then press return on your keyboard when you see this you want to just type in yes and then you want to put your password for dsm i've done that so there we go now we're logged into our nas now what you want to do is type sudo space dash i and then type your password in again this is going to give you root access so that we're able to change the configuration file now you want to put in cd slash etsy slash samba and then press return. All right, so now we're in the right directory. Now you want to type vim space smb.conf and then press return. And this opens up the smb configuration file in the vim text editor. So now you want to page down or use your arrow key to go all the way down to the line that starts with pass db space back in. All right, and then you wanna press the I key on your keyboard and press return, and that will insert a line break above, move your arrow key up one, and now you can type the command that Apple told us to put in, VFS space objects equals C-A-T-I-A, but this time you wanna make sure you put the commas, fruit comma streams underscore X-A-T-T-R, and there we go. I was trying to do this without the commas and it didn't work. I learned that you needed to use commas from a post on Reddit, which I'll link in the description, which is excellent, especially for someone like me who knows very, very little about Linux. All right, so the next thing to do is to press the escape key on your keyboard and then type colon WQ exclamation point and then press return on your keyboard. That will save and quit out of Vim. All right, so now once we're back at the command line, you wanna type the following. Restart SMBD for SMB daemon. All right, and then press return on your keyboard and that will restart SMB. So now we can just exit out of the terminal. We're good to go there. We've configured our NAS, it's ready to go. So now let's perform the final test and see if we can actually save some libraries out to our NAS location. So we go back to Final Cut Pro, new library. We're gonna choose our shared folder, the FCPX. And let's name our library once we select our folder. We'll call it test library and then click save. And look, no error message. It actually saved that library directly to our NAS, communicating via that SMB protocol. So this is great, I've created a new project. Now I'm just gonna drag this file from my desktop directly to this project and it's going to automatically move that, copy that over to the library on my NAS. And you can see it doing so right now. But here's what really tells you that it's working. You can see the local network activity as it's moving that data to the NAS. So ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Now we can store our Final Cut Pro 10 libraries directly on our Synology NAS. So ladies and gents, if you're interested in editing videos off your NAS, I hope you were able to follow this tutorial and that it was useful for you for enabling library storage directly on that NAS. Now that all being said, I don't think a Synology NAS or any NAS for that matter is necessarily the best way to edit videos for Final Cut Pro 10. There are a lot of great options out there. Uh, obviously editing directly off your Mac, uh, the internal storage is great if you had the storage to, to work with. Uh, also editing off an external SSDs, there's some really great ones out there, especially Thunderbolt 3 enabled SSDs. And there's stuff like this, a direct attached storage solution. This is the Promise Pegasus R6, I believe that's what it's called. Uh, it has six drive bays. You can store a ton of video on that drive. And the nice thing about it is that it doesn't rely on any sort of network connection. It's a direct attached storage solution. So it directly connects to your Mac via Thunderbolt 3. Therefore, you're gonna get some really great performance from that. So lots of different things to consider on your editing journey. Hopefully you'll find the solution that works for you. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. If you have any comments, advice, suggestions, corrections, please let me know. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.